Welcome to my channel. I am Lane. I am a certified life coach and addiction recovery coach that teaches manifestation and how to manifest the things that you desire properly. If you want help with one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do offer services. You can check out the Dropbox below at solutionscoaching.org for all of my services if you want help with that. Today, we are going to do a lecture about changing states. And Neville Goddard talks about how you can help change a state for somebody else or how you shift into different states uh, throughout your own day in your own life. One thing that I'd like to say is there is a hot topic of what states are and how you're consciously shifting states, but you are doing it subconsciously. Okay. Yes, you can consciously make a decision to be in a new state or to hold somebody else in a new state, but subconsciously it is going to seamlessly bring you from one state, the undesired state into the desired state. And then the desired state is your only state that becomes your dominant state. And a lot of people don't truly understand what states are. They talk about the quantum jumping and leaping and all this stuff, but not really explaining the fact that that state that you are currently in, you created desired or not desired, you have created it. And the way that we do that is through our subconscious, through our assumptions. If we no longer want to be in the state that we are in, we can change our assumptions and our beliefs and our, our subconscious um, awareness of where we are right now and stop focusing on what we don't want and focus on what we do want. And we can also do this for other people. Say if we have a specific person and they are acting undesirably, they cheat, they lie, they're just showing up in a very negative way that you don't want. And they don't even have to go to that extreme where they just cheat and lie. Say, um, you know, they're just not completely uh, committed to you. It's more like a friends with benefits thing. Whatever it is, you are holding them in that state because you have assumptions that they are like this and they do this and this is what they think about women and relationships or men in relationships. That is exactly the state you are holding them in. So they have no choice but to play out these characteristics, these assumptions that you assume about them. But if you assume one thing, you can then assume a different thing and you can change the state that they are in. You can do this with strangers, you can do this with your specific person, you can do this with wealth and abundance, you can do this with your living arrangements. This is what manifestation is. It's changing your state and it is a seamless change. It happens naturally. A lot of people will look at it and be like, well, that was gonna happen anyway, and Neville explains this. But it's only happening and it only looks like a coincidence because that is the state that you are going to dominantly be in because that's the state you have been focusing on, good or bad. So we can take our power back and focus on the state we do want. And we do that through imaginal acts, inner conversations, positive inner conversations, um, scripting, affirming. It doesn't matter what helps you get into the state of having or being. The technique does not matter. It's just the feeling state and your assumptions and your beliefs around it. And you can do this for anything to change your life or other people's lives. This is how we do it. So let's dive into Neville's lecture and he really breaks it down. Tonight, we will discuss states. It's simply a state of consciousness through which the individual, you and I, the immortal being, we pass through these states. The word Moses means to be born. It's the old perfective of the Egyptian verb to be born. Abraham, the father of the multitude. We start there, moving through states, and you and I pass through these states towards our own redemption. 
we come to the end and that state is personified in scripture and men take the personification and worship it as a person stick it on the wall and then cross themselves before it and genuflate not knowing that these are states so we must learn to distinguish between states and the individuals who pass through these states these states are eternal they are forever you are an immortal being and you move through states the states remain permanent forever you pass on we change states the states do not change we change states but we, the individual, we are forever. It's like moving through a city. The city remains, but we pass on. To think that because we have left the city, that the city has ceased to exist would be stupid. The city remains, and we go on. We pass from one state to another state. And finally, we come to the end. That end is described in scripture as Jesus. But that's a state. You are the immortal being passing through states. And when you come to the very end, you are in that state. It was predetermined. It was shown all of us before we started. Shown us in the state called Abraham. We saw it all in detail. And if we entered it reluctantly or not, who knows? Paul tells us that we were made subject unto futility, not willingly, but by the will of him who subjected us in hope. And the hope was that we would obtain the glorious liberty of the sons of God. So we were told that it was not altogether a willing subjection on our part. But we kept the divine vision, as Paul said, in time of trouble. And so we continue on the journey. In this world, you and I can create states. But the spiritual states are eternal. We create a state here. It's not eternal. We create a state to deliver individuals forevermore. I create a state, somebody asked me. Will you hear that I am? And they name what they would like to be. All right? So that I must create the state. Knowing that he is now in a state that he dislikes. I must distinguish between the being and the state that he is in. So I see him unemployed. All right? So he's unemployed. And he wants to be gainfully employed. There's nothing wrong in that. So I represent him to myself as one who is gainfully employed who has more than he's ever had before to the degree that I am self-persuaded that he is what I have now imagined him to be to that degree he will actually become it I move him out of one state into another but that state into which he fell remains for anyone to fall into it and all can fall into it at the same time for that matter He's not the only occupant of the state of being unemployed. There could be millions being unemployed. And there could be millions who desire to be out of it. Many who are unemployed have no desire to be out of it. They prefer to be on welfare. That's their desire. Perfectly all right. But if someone desires to be gainfully employed and to leave the state of being unemployed, you and I can create that state. Well, how do I create the state? By using my imagination. Imagination is not a state. It's the human existence himself. You are all imagination. And God is all imagination. You are God. And God is actually within you as your own wonderful human imagination. Now, these permanent states of the soul, these spiritual states, they remain. You and I pass through them towards our own redemption. But in the interval, we meet an, a friend, and the friend is in need of help. 
and to help is to move him out of the state. I couldn't give him money, but as Peter said, silver and gold have I not for thee, but such as I have give I unto thee. And he creates a state and takes the man from being a beggar who's always begging on the corner and puts him into a state where he jumps up with joy he's now employed, not begging for money. So he didn't give him coins, he simply gave him a new state of consciousness. So I take you as an individual. I represent you to myself as the one that you would like to be. The one that I, if I were in your state, would like to be. I make it fit within what is known as the golden rule. I do unto others as I would have them do unto me. If I were in that state, would I like to be in some better state? Certainly. Well then, do it to another. And so if he asks it of you, you simply represent him to yourself as being gainfully employed, or if he's unwell, as being well, or if he is not, if he wants to be married and he can't find the proper mate, then you're, in your mind's eye, you assume that he has found the proper mate. Whatever it is that is a normal, natural request that is not in conflict with your own moral, ethical code. And you create a state. This state, then you lift your individual into that state. Well, how do I do it? I carry on a conversation mentally with that friend from the basis that he is in that state. He tells me how happy he is with his new job and how much he's making. I see him in my mind's eye, radiant. Well then, am I self-persuaded that this imaginal act is a fact? Do I really believe in the reality of what I've done? Do I believe that imagining creates reality? I do. Well then, to the degree that I am self-persuaded, he becomes the embodiment of what I've imagined him to be. These are states. So man must distinguish between the individual and the state that he is in. Now that lecture, I just love it because it shows how genuine a person can be just by using their power. He sat there and was manifesting for anybody that asked him. And that right there is selflessness. He could make the choice to hold these people in these states and make them do it themselves. But because they don't fully understand how the imagination works and that we are pure imagination, we are God, they don't have their power. So they aren't manifesting for themselves the things that they do want. So good practice here is to manifest for other people. The resistance isn't as high because you're manifesting for someone else. It's not your true desire other than the desire to help others. So it gives you good practice, good understanding of how manifestation works, good practice with your visualizations or hearing the voices in inner conversations. And it builds your faith that manifestation works. So practicing on somebody else to do what they would like to have happened or to do what you would like to happen for you. You never want to do anything or manifest for somebody that would not be a desirable state. We don't want to hold them in a negative state. So say if there's somebody out there that you do not like, you do not hold them in a state of wanting everything bad to happen to them or uh, wanting them to get cheated on or disrespected or hurt. Because that, when you manifest for somebody else, it manifests for you as well. Okay, which Neville kind of talked about that. We only do what we would want done to ourselves. So remember that. Never uh, be mean to somebody or do it out of vengeance. We want to do kind things to other people and help them improve their lives and improve their state. The only reason why they are acting out or being disrespectful towards you is because of your beliefs and assumptions about them or the beliefs and assumptions that you hold about yourself and how people treat you. So keep that in mind. I hope that you guys enjoyed this lecture. It's really powerful because it teaches you exactly what states are and how we're changing into them every single second, every single day. And there is no state that can be destroyed. It is always there. There are unlimited states. So the possibilities truly are limitless, guys. 
If you want help understanding states more and a deeper dive into your own situation, check out solutionscoaching.org for one-on-one coaching services. And as always, guys, have a fantastic day. You got this.